Hello folks, Ricky Tang here. Now, uh, you can see me, but you can't see what I'm riding, but I'll show you now. BMW's K1600 GT. Thanks to Cotswold. Do we see Cotswold anywhere? Ah, Cotswold. Cotswold Motorrad. So uh, this is the first bike I've taken out with the help of uh, Alex, sales manager here. And we're going to take a spin on this BC. <laughs> Look at the size of it. And what uh, tickles me is that this tire retires a 19055ZR17 and it looks small. <laughs> it looks a bit like a 170 or 180 on this bike. God, it is so huge. So uh, I haven't even swung a leg over it yet. I've just been uh, spending time connecting my phone to the TFT. Let's hoik up my uh, jeans. Swing a leg over. Wow. Getting it upright. Takes a bit of effort. Where's the stand? Thankfully, the side stand's really easy to get to. To be fair, actually, lifting it up on level ground is not that difficult. So that's good news. I feel... Well, it's not very windy here, but I feel the bike moving up and down. I think the suspension's doing something, trying to compensate for my weight. You know, I've got my feet down, so I think it's just a bit confused. Or I'm confused. Let's start the bike. I'm just going to run around this car park a little bit first. So here I am. Where am I? Seven miles an hour. And at this really slow speed, I'm just feathering the clutch as well. Keep the bike upright. I know I'm on a nice level tarmac, but it's really well balanced. Doesn't feel scary in the slightest. I know it's going to be very early days. I'm fresh out of the shop. Uh, but the throttle feels rather elastic at, the, at those low speeds. Doesn't quite feel like there's a one-to-one -one relationship to acceleration, but I think once you start piling on a few revs, not many, it feels more direct. Now, yeah, brand new bike. Can you imagine having that brand new bike feeling with, <laughs> with one of these underneath you? I feel pretty special right now. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do, just to help me get familiar with the motorbike, is put it in its uh, natural habitat, really. I'm going to go straight on the motorway for a junction or two, while I just sit in there, get myself acquainted with this monster. If I remember rightly, it's 160 horsepower at 6,750 RPM. 180 newton meters at I think of about 5,400 or 5,450 something like that. First impressions then, it's hugely comfortable. That seat is beautifully padded so far. I've only done a mile. <laughs> Easy to look behind me and see what's going on. So yeah, question. Do you want to do huge miles? <laughs> do you want to do this? in comfort that's what uh, this bike is designed to do i have to admit um, on my test ride today um, i'm not going to be doing massive miles and a lot of them will be on smaller roads because i do want to feel how this bike kind of handles a roads and even b roads as well as this stuff So since I'm here on the motorway, I'll play with the screen. Now it's currently in, a, in its highest position. And uh, that means um, no turbulence hitting my helmet. But I think the wind's coming around the side of me and somehow pushing me in the back. It's kind of pushing me forward. It's a rather strange sensation. So I'm going to bring it down to its uh, smallest or shortest height. wind noise is getting noisier. Wow, that's rather unpleasant. <laughs> it's a uh, light quick turbulence, it's not really big thumping stuff, but there's a lot of noise around my shoulders and my ears. So let's try and find a sweet spot. OK, 
okay. Got it to a point where my eyes are just above the windscreen looking forward, so I've got a, a clear view just about. Not too bad. So yeah, you've got something you can play with here. Oh, nice horn. Yeah, you, you look at this bike and you think, God, that is heavy. It's going to feel bloody heavy. Um, but it doesn't. Not even at less than 30 miles an hour, it doesn't feel heavy. <laughs> so everything's new on this bike, including the brakes. And um, I just used the front brake in anger a little earlier on. And there wasn't a lot of feel, and there wasn't a lot of stopping force, to be honest with you. Uh, but I suspect it's a brake pass needing to bed in. And I think by the end of the ride, the brakes will be pretty impressive. In fact, I'll use the back brake a bit as well, just to help take the sheen off those pads for the next rider. Quite impressed with my uh, behind anyway. There's quite a bit of space on this rider's seat to, to move back and forth. <laughs> it is so smooth. Just purposely going over a little bit of uh, noise on the road surface. Wow, I just went over a manhole cover that's kind of got that herringbone style to it, kind of the raised little ridges in the arrow shape. Couldn't feel the surface of that uh, manhole cover at all. <laughs> so uh, you could argue rather remote feeling, but at the same time it's smoothed it out nicely. And just see if it wants to kind of track this little um, dug up section of tarmac and it's not tracking it, it's not kind of trying to follow it at all. I can just about feel it <laughs> under the wheels. It is doing a good job of um, insulating me from the poor road surface. And again, um, I might talk about the slow speed balance a few times. It's outstanding. Four miles an hour. But the road surface is fine. I'm bought upright. There's no camber for me to stress about. So it's all, all good. Um, getting my feet down. I've got a 32 inch inside leg. Can't quite get them flat unless I kind of shuffle around a bit. But I've solidly got the balls of my feet down. So I feel secure when I'm at a standstill on this level ground. Scored it. Okay, it's got a lot of torque. <laughs> but uh, you can still catch it out. That's something you really wouldn't want to do if you're on a bit of a dodgy surface, have the bike stall on you. I don't know if it has the equivalent of uh, Suzuki's low RPM assist. But if it hasn't, it should have. Tell you what, nearly stalled it again. Maybe it's just a matter of getting used to it. It's a new bike to me. But as I let the clutch out, it's almost as like if the revs drop just a little too far. But it just seems a touch easy to uh, potentially stall it. I think uh, if you own this bike, you'll get used to that and you'll just naturally give it a bit more uh, throttle as you put away and it uh, won't prove to be an issue. It's just an observation in the first few miles. We have some uh, adjustable damping settings which I am uh, able to adjust even though I'm uh, rolling which is good. Okay, road and dynamic modes. I'll leave it on road for now. All right, I'm going to put over in a minute and just try and suss out this navigation deal just a bit confused as to why I'm not getting a full map on the screen. I'm sure that was an option. Anyway, ergonomics, riding position. Not quite as upright as you might imagine for this big Tora. I am leaning forward slightly, but only a, a couple of degrees, I think, from my hips uh, forward. 
very slight bend back for my feet compared to my uh, knees maybe five ten degrees can't imagine people being uh, cramped by this in any way if I look down if I had much longer legs I still don't think they would hit the uh, the fairings or the inner fairings and I could always sit back a bit as well if I was one of those taller guys with much longer legs as it is I am five foot seven uh, 170 centimeters and I don't feel intimidated by this bike maybe if I was on gravel <laughs> uh, uh, and I had to push the bike then I'd be intimidated but riding it so far holds uh, no surprises this bike being the uh, GTSE I've got fog lights as well and a radio might just try that now <laughs> Hey, I'm going to hear the radio and I shouldn't get a copyright strike because it's actually somebody talking I can hear that radio pretty well um, I am only doing 40 miles an hour at motorway speeds you might be struggling a little bit now on the radio here on the wonder wheel if I push left and right on the wonder wheel it takes me to the presets but you would have thought if I pushed and held the wonder wheel it would scan or search forward or search backwards doesn't do that seemingly I think they missed a the trick there I've actually got believe it or not medium wave or AM as well as FM and DAB radio <laughs> that's pretty impressive and surprising let's give it a bit of low rev throttle action we're at 1500 rpm in fourth. Uh, tractable. Very tractable. As you might know, I do like a tractable engine that pulls from nowhere. If the engine can do it, I like to use it. Right, so, let's try and suss out the deal with the navigation. Can I get a full-on map going on? I thought I could. I'm having a bit of trouble connecting my phone to the motorbike. Now, it is connected. Well, I think maybe Bluetooth is connected, but the Motorrad app, it seems to be continually connecting. It's strange because it says it is connected, although I haven't got the, the bike shape. It's got the information. So it is a bit odd. No, it's not having it. I'm giving up on this one. It just does not want to connect. It's probably my phone that's at fault here. Now I'm on a bit of an angle this time. So getting up this bike might be difficult. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is <laughs> that's a bit hard on a, on a camber. That does take a bit of effort. I cannot deny. Quite a clunk there going into first, but the bike didn't really move. That's nice. The damping uh, action on this bike does feel rather luxurious. <laughs> bike does feel quite soft but uh, not, um, not giving much of a pogo effect. Not like uh, the effect I sampled on the R1250 RT. Uh, I think that was earlier this year. That was, at times, <laughs> unrideable at um, reasonable speeds on, on undulating roads. Uh, default road damping just seemed really badly calibrated my eyes but yeah this feels a little bit more composed in the road mode I've been talking about this display and, and trying to get it going to my liking uh, trying to get the maps up I've, I've failed to do that I think but um, otherwise I absolutely love it 
the amount of information you can get on this screen really really nice I've managed to uh, connect my packed or bold to the motorbike so the motorbike is kind of in control of the phone in terms of uh, controlling the media playback and I can look at the phone book now on my on my phone via the motorbike so I can make and receive calls to working quite nicely right you don't get the sensation you're wafting along 100% of the time if you drop down a kind of a sudden dip in the road bike does react with a bit of a little bit of a thump but to be expected really but does just drop straight up and down this bike feels solid and capable of quite sporty riding if you had the opportunity now this bike has got a lot of poke and we know that it does seem that up to maybe 3000 rpm uh, the response is a little bit muted and it does feel like there's a, a definite step in the power but I'm not quite sure where it is yet I'll let you know right okay it's four and a half thousand rpm <laughs> some reason right back there the power picks up quite markedly right let's go and get some go-go uh, juice I think we've got a 26 litre fuel tank here, so uh, I've done it again, sorry. Two stalls. Again, I'm sure it's just a matter of uh, acclimatisation, but a tad frustrating nonetheless. Because the bike's so quiet, it's quite hard to hear where the engine's at, just as you're trying to pull away at low revs. Oh, this bike is handling uh, higher speeds on A roads pretty darn well. So I gave it a little bit of a blast at higher speed there. Did a bit of overtaking. You've got to plan ahead. Not because it's slow, it's just because there's a lot of weight. You've got to know whether you, uh, you've got the, the space to accelerate or whether the roads are going to you know, disappear out of view quickly and maybe you more prudent to uh, stay behind the vehicle in front of you but it certainly does buggy when the road gets uh, fast but still a bit bumpy in the, and uh, with the undulations I was however in road damping but yeah it, it felt like a lot of weight to control but if I find the dynamic damping setting again and switch this on now for the next stretch of uh, fun road, it might just pull the whole plot together. Wow. Doesn't hang about when it gets into the old uh, power band, I'll tell you that. The uh, dynamic damping certainly has uh, tightened the bike up. So, this bike is actually quite a bit of fun on the back roads, but you can tell certainly that, um, that it's not in its element. But it's putting up with me. That's all I can ask, really, of a bike of uh, this size. The windscreen and the fairing are doing a good job, really, of getting the wind away from me, because when I take my hand out here, it is like, obviously, when you take your hand outside of a, a car window at speed, there's a lot of wind pressure, and I'm just not feeling it on the bike. So I've just pulled up. I think I'll do a little walk around, but I've just pulled up next to a load of litter that someone's just dumped on the verge there, so I want to back up a bit. Luckily for me, I got reverse, so 
I'm going to put it in reverse. Oh, that's some speed. <laughs> One day, bikes like this will come with reversing cameras because if you've got a pillion on the bike, maybe, and you've got a top box as well as luggage, you can imagine it's a bit hard to really be certain what's behind you when you're reversing unless you get off the bike. So yeah, I put it in reverse mode, you've got an R button on the left hand switch gear, then you hold down the starter button while the engine's running, and you hear the res rise. And it's, it's a fixed speed it goes to. Shame you can't use the throttle, but I imagine that could be a recipe for trouble in reverse. <laughs> right, let's stop. Have a little wander around the bike. The bike's so big, I can't really fit it in the frame without potentially walking onto the road. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll be a little bit cautious here. So yeah, 160 horsepower, um, 180 newton meters, or I think 130 odd, 133 foot-pounds of torque. It certainly goes. But you've got to get the revs up a little bit. It seems to have a bit of a step in the power after uh, 4,500 RPM. It's quite docile under that. There's not a, a full-on torque monster at, at every point in the rev range. I suppose I'd better turn the bike on, have my so you can see the lights. Lower fog lights on, and the riding lights. I imagine the lights aren't going to come on properly unless the bike started. I guess that is your low beam. Sorry for the flickery uh, riding lights there. That's not happening in reality. Oh, wow. Main beam does look very sexy. <laughs> I like the main beam look there. Rear lights. Yeah, well, it could be bigger. Heaters. Oh yeah, they're uh, pretty nice and bright. Okay. Pretty good looking. Settings. Telephone active, media active, navigation is on. We have a radio on the on the SE model, which we've seen before. My vehicle. You sit now. Same sort of settings here that I've got on my R1250R. So yeah. Service due apparently. The dash is similar, except obviously the new bit that you get to, or you can navigate with, just with the wonder wheel going left and right. Navigation, chip computer, onboard computer, then off, basically. And if you were playing some media, you know, uh, not radio, you'll see a media entry there instead. In fact, I'll show you. If I go down, cross to media, since my phone's connected, what am I playing? Is it embarrassing? Uh, thunder, <laughs> classic 80s and 90s hair rock. What's next? Bang, stone rock. What's next? Michael Jackson, no, baby. Um, Living Color, bit of Hendrix, bit of Queen, bit of Cure, Sweet Max Sister. Hey, I'm old. I'll put the capacity on the screen for these bad boys. We also have little locking boxes down here. Tiny bit of space. You might just be able to get your wallet in there if you're lucky. One on the other side. See if it's any bigger. Nope. <laughs> Same size. Any charging going on in there? I don't think so. You also have a pocket here, or a slot up here, to put your um, mobile phone. Unfortunately, I do not know how to open it. Price uh, for this motorbike in the UK, starting from 22,195 of your English pounds. Certainly an awful lot of money. But cheaper than 
many cars. <laughs> and you're also getting a lot of performance and technology for your money. So if you just prefer two wheels to four, then this comes in at a, quite a reasonable price. It is a lot of fun to ride as well. Like I said, as long as you plan ahead. <laughs> it's more of a yacht than a speedboat. Good looking machine in black, but I think I like the, uh, the kind of the HP style, the, the sportier uh, red, white and blue cutters, BMW Motorsport cutters. I mean, the bike's big enough, you might as well make a statement with it. Exhaust look pretty beefy, although the motorbike is on the quiet side. And I wouldn't necessarily want a louder exhaust. Even if something was done with the airbox or the induction, just to make it a bit louder from the rider's point of view, that would make it quite enjoyable. Wow, we got a centre stand, as we should. I'm not going there, especially uh, <laughs> not on this surface. But it has been fun to ride, without a doubt. It's blown away some of my misconceptions. I was expecting it to be just a little bit more awkward to ride, but um, yeah, modern motorcycles designs means that this is really behaving itself in a nice way, even on pretty rough roads. I'm gonna finish this little trip and then we'll return the motorcycle back to Cotswold Motorrad. Sure, they'll be relieved. I'm uh, pleased to report now that the, the front brake is a lot stronger than I felt initially at the beginning of the ride. I think you just needed to take the sheen off the brake pads. And with the, the duo lever set up at the front, there's next to no brake dive, even hard on the brakes. Would I enjoy a second date with this bike? Absolutely yes. There's so much more to learn about this machine than, uh, than we can manage in a couple of hours. But I've enjoyed those couple of hours immensely. Hopefully one day we'll do a, a bigger tour on a machine like this. And uh, at least now you've got a bit of an idea of what it's like uh, away from the Autobahn, away from where it works best and uh, in slightly more uh, of a challenging environment for a beast of these dimensions. Is it the bike for me? Well, I don't do big journeys, I don't do big trips, at least not yet, not at this stage in my life. But uh, if I did, then I'm sure this would be right up there in the shopping list. Now, at speed, I, I appreciate the electronic, the adjustable windscreen. But on balance, I find the uh, BMW R1250RT was more of a quiet ride, more of a peaceful ride with its screen. But everybody's a different shape and size. Most people are taller than me. <laughs> You might be considering one of these, so your mileage may vary. I pressed the number one shortcut on my configurable buttons down on the lower fairing there, and I turned on the grip heating inadvertently because I pressed button number one. And it's on five, which is the highest setting for the grip heating. At this stage, though, it doesn't feel very hot. I'm going to leave it on and see if uh, it gets unbearable or not. <laughs> Oh, another thing I wanted to check, according to the, the bike's computer. Computer, what is your current fuel consumption? And allegedly, we're doing, whoa, 36.6 miles per gallon. I'm sure when you're cruising, that'd be a lot more uh, palatable, the old uh, fuel consumption there. One thing that is nice is that the, uh, the screen is nice and solid at speed. There's a bike I rode recently, I think it was a Pan America, not recently, sorry, it was last year, if not the year before now. But um, the screen on that was just atrocious. Really, really bad quality and wobbled in the wind. Let's get a bit of uh, cruise control on. So the heated grips, they're not uh, ow, hot, but they are pretty warm. I'm hoping I can press button number one to actually turn them off again. Oh no, I, oh well, actually it's even nicer. Keep pressing the button and it goes through the, the heating option. So it starts at five and then goes down to one as you keep pressing it. Excellent, really. So in summary, yeah, it, uh, 
maybe a bit too much bike for me, this bike. <laughs> but it's not at all intimidating to ride. Well done, BMW, on one hell of a touring machine. Thing that will catch you out if you're not a very strong person, though, is uh, or not a very or not a relatively tall person, is um, dodgy cambers, angled road surfaces. That kind of make sure you keep your footing. I have ridden the uh, 1800 Goldwing. It was only a very brief ride, though, well, about 45 minutes or, or so. But this bike's packed a little extra punch, a bit of extra spice, and I think I prefer that personally. Blackbird. That's a sports tour. This is most certainly not a sports tour. <laughs> it has got a, a bit of a sporty theme to it, and it can be hustled to a degree. But uh, yeah, if you want sporty handling, as well as a good turn of speed, then there are other bikes that will kind of uh, suit you better than, than one of these. But if you're sporty days, I'm throwing around Benza behind you. You still want to go quick. And you want to be comfortable. And you got the money. <laughs> then this could be a, uh, a great option for you. Well, I hadn't talked about a uh, throttle transition on and off the throttle. It's nice. Actually, you know, you see me do um, slow speeds earlier on in the video. Although, although I wasn't thinking about on-off throttle transition, and I was feathering the throttle a little bit, uh, still well behaved. No, no real shunting to speak of. No jerkiness. It's very smooth. Some people have said that this bike has no vibration. When you come off the throttle about three, three and a half thousand RPM, just a little bit of a, f a fizz through the handlebars. That's off the throttle. When you're on the throttle, it goes away. So basically, while you're generally riding, no, no vibration. It's a really pleasurable place to be. It does hold a line well around the bend. <laughs> Mirrors, excellent. Yeah, they haven't really vibrated to any great degree. They're wide. They're pretty big. So you do see uh, quite a lot behind you. Unless you're probably uh, a bit of a beefcake. That's about it for me on my first ride. With the help of a BMW Cotswold Motorrad. Just turning back up at their uh, site right now. So I really appreciate the, the opportunity to uh, start taking some of their demo bikes out for a spin. Thank you to uh, Alex. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll pull there and I'll back it in like a boss. There we go, folks. We're back. Had a really enjoyable time on this bike. <laughs> Would love to take it out again. So that's about it from me, guys. Take care of yourselves, ride safe. See you down there in the comments. Ta-da!